You're live. You're live. All right. I don't know if I'm uh, I'm bringing this up. Okay, here we go. I'm just kind of monitoring on my phone. What's up, everybody? Uh, <clears throat> it's good to be back. It's been a while since I've been on a stream of any type. Wow, this is awesome. Um, I'm not uh, seeing... Oh, there's the chat window right there. Okay. Ah, there we go. All right, good to have Michael already on here. But it's good to be back, everybody. Thanks to Eric and the crew at Your Guitar Sage for having me on. We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about just about anything you want to. I'm gonna turn myself up a little bit in my ears. There we go. All right, that sounds much better to me. Uh, and I'm just trying to since I'm flying in remotely, it's a little bit of a different <laughs> a little bit of a different situation here. But it's good to be back with everybody. Um, all of this stuff kind of has coalesced. Into a um, into a really fun, <laughs> exciting kind of week because uh, on Monday I woke up to not only the launch of a wonderful sale we're having on my two courses that I've put out in conjunction with Eric and the crew, but I hit thirty thousand subscribers on YouTube. So if you're one of those people, thanks so much um, for following me on the journey. It's been a lot of fun over the past year and a half um, because. Look, it just so happened that I was like, hey, I'm going to focus more on being a um, an online guitar instructor as well as a full-time player and just be like, wow, I didn't know that a, a pandemic was going to come, come upon us and keep everybody at home. So it was a nice sort of uh, fortuitous double whammy. And in that pro in, during those times, we were able to kind of not only put out videos on a roughly weekly basis, we did live streams, I put out the courses with Eric, put some other courses out as well through some other through some other resources and it's just been um, a really wonderful um, sort of sort of journey up to this point and I've met most of the people that I see on the, on the chat like I've come to know as as friends you know whether they're uh, in, you know in the US or abroad but uh, man I can't say I can't say enough about uh, all the support everybody's been giving me. It's really great. Um, we talk via email, we talk via social media, and I want to continue to do that. And it's going to be <laughs> what's funny is uh, it's really influenced how much live performing I do because I enjoy this so much. Um, but uh, um, you know, the live performing thing, like I have to go out of town tomorrow, and I won't be back until Friday. But I only have one show during those three days, so. I'm really streamlining my life a little bit to be more involved with uh, with this this particular kind of audience and projects going forth. Um, so yeah, we got a bunch of folks sort of joining in already to the chat. Good to have my knees hurt. Good to have Michael as always. Like I said, um, thanks for the for the sound check. Good to have Jason Carter. I knew you'd be here. I knew you wouldn't let us let us down. Um, and it, it's the raining. Oh, so so Carol's working on. Uh, beginner blues and really enjoying it. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today is what you can expect from the courses that we have on sale, what you can expect f that's forthcoming. I'm really excited about. Uh, it's going to be cool. So first of all, sign into the chat. Say if you bought one of those courses or if you're looking for one of those courses, either my beginner blues rhythm course or um, uh, or the intermediate course. So if you did that and you're enjoying it, drop me a line in here as well as also don't forget to review um, the course in Udemy as well. We really appreciate when you do that. Uh, and of course, Mike and the team will be firing off links for special pricing uh, this week on those two courses. But let's talk about why I chose to do a beginner blues uh, rhythm guitar course. We'll talk about the intermediate one as well. And of course, we'll talk about this really cool new guitar that I've just acquired. I ordered it a year ago and got it just uh, last week, I guess it was. Was it last week? Yeah, I think it was. Um, so anyway, beginning blues. Why is this so important? Well, a lot of you probably have picked up an acoustic guitar um, or an inexpensive electric guitar, and you're kind of going, you're playing some chords, and you're like, okay, those are the chords I need for uh, for a blues in E, let's say, right? And I have so many students over the years um, that have come to me and they're like, well, I know E7, and I know, let's see here, I know A7, and my hair's going crazy. I have to have the fan on in here. This room gets really hot. I have tube amps and camera gear and stuff. And then they'll say, oh, I know B7. But they can't sit down and put it together, you know, uh, on their own. 
So I say to them, okay, here's what you got to do. We're going to put a rhythm to that, and we're going to make it really simple. And in that beginner blues course, if you can play this chord, which is an E7, and you can go one, rest, three, and rest, or down, rest, down, up, rest. Do you hear how that's already musical? Okay, now this is not. Eh, let's see here, make sure my fingers are right. You know, a lot of you probably have done that when you bought a guitar trying to find the right spots to put your fingers and all that kind of stuff, but you haven't maybe attached a solid rhythm to it. So anything simple like that one, rest, three, and rest, and one, rest, three, and rest, and one. Then maybe you change to your A7. So very simple stuff, right? Let me finish it. <laughs> Five chord. And there's a lot of you that can probably already do that on this stream and can play rings around that kind of stuff. But I'm the kind of instructor that likes to plant seeds and make foundations and stuff so that um, those topics can be you know, a thread through all of your learning. That's what's really, really important to me. And that's like a really, really ground level place to start um, is, is a strong foundation in rhythm. So what's gonna happen then is you're gonna put those, so let's stay in the course content here. So once you do that, I'll teach you as many seventh chords as we can play. We'll even take, you know, for an E7, we might pay that one, because just going that E7 to this one is kinda of cool on its own. Maybe you wanna to go to this A7, then this one. Back to this one. And just one B7, maybe two A7s, then E7. All right? So, right there, you just played the blues. Nobody can argue with that. Absolutely not. And the cool thing is, is once you take that little progression right there, you could play any number of of blues tunes that way. And once you make it through the very end of that course, I do set you up with some sort of beginner level blues songs that, heck, anybody would play live or with friends, and it would be totally acceptable and fun. Because a lot of times in guitar courses, we don't uh, know how to put it all together, right? That's one of the things I hear all the time is I, I know scales, I know chords, I can't put it all together. Well, the song, is really the glue and is really what you're doing. I mean, it's like if you learned how, and I'm a metaphor junkie, right? I love metaphors. And if you, you know, if you were to read the dictionary, <laughs> um, you know, and you didn't know how to put sentences together or solos or something, you would just be there with a bunch of words. So you copy sentences. You copy sentences your parents say, your friends say. You know, probably a lot of you who watch and have kids and you're like, oh, they went to school and they became a different person. <laughs> yeah, because they were mimicking everything their friends said. And, you know, if you went to, um, like I went to a school, uh, like a middle school and a high school where like kids from all different areas would come in. They went to their respective elementary schools. But, you know, you'd get, you know, kids that migrated from the south up to the north, had, had some accents, different slang, and you pick up all this stuff. It's the same thing with guitar playing, you know. I can play you a Stevie Ray Vaughan inspired rhythm part. I can play you a Robin Ford inspired rhythm part. You know, for instance, if we're doing, uh, you know, the Stevie Ray Vaughan thing. You know, that kind of thing. But if it's a shuffle and I want to do, like if it's one, two, three, Robin. Different, Stevie, Robin. You 
You see what I'm saying? So I'm influenced by those voices I heard at school, if you will. Okay, but going back to the beginner course, you have to kind of start somewhere and know that that solid foundation and steady rhythmic component is what's really, really going to propel you through all of your chord stuff. So, so yeah, so that's kind of where the beginner, um, the beginner blues rhythm course starts. So let me, let me grab a water real quick. As that course moves on, and ask questions about these courses because I have over 20 online guitar courses and many of you have been faithfully purchasing those and following them for a long, long time. And I always get the question, you know, uh, what is, how is this course different than the other? I guarantee you that they're all different in some capacity, but you know, there's only 12 notes that we can work with, right? Lots of chords, but there's always going to be some overlap, but the approach is different. So. Um, I I love approaching the same concept in different ways and making courses out of it because it might resonate with someone a little bit differently than than another one, for instance. Okay, so the cool thing about the beginner blues rhythm course is outside of the the focus on dominant seven chords, um, the emphasis is really being a better rhythm guitar player. So we'll learn, like I said, as many dominant seven chords here as we can in different keys like a G7, uh, C7, stuff like that, F7, how about a D7, you know we'll learn as many as we can in that first open position there and we'll do uh, different examples for each and what's cool is each one has a track that'll go along with it. Now, so I'm a two beverage kind of guy, all right, got the water in one, got the coffee in the other. So one of the things that we do here, when I do a, 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 a like a, what's the word, a remote in session, you know, you know, it's Eric and the guys, they call me up and they're like, hey, let's get on about a half an hour before, make sure it's working, right? So there we go. <laughs> and uh, we did that, we tested, we restarted, we did it again, and I was like, they didn't know this, but you guys gotta wait, I was, I was making the coffee, it was so important. <laughs> in any case, um, I'm glad I have both beverages to keep me going because I haven't done a live stream in a while. Yeah, so, anyhow. And I'm, I can't get up early enough. Well, I can on the weekends, but I, I'm usually just lying on the couch or something when, when our buddy RJ has his coffee live stream on, on Saturdays. Um, it's always a good hang, for sure. In any case, so as you progress through... The beginner blues course, this is why it's valuable for, um, you know, 10, 11 bucks, is because then I start to teach you bar chords, dominant seven bar chords. So then you can play, oh, let's say uh, G7, C7, C D7, and then G7. And then I'll say, okay, well, now let's play a blues in D. And we can go... D, G7, A7, D. Or we could play C7, F7, G7. And I get you moving around there, so if you're the beginning kind of player that hasn't traversed the guitar all that much, um, these will get you in there. And also, aside from the dominant seven bar chords, we'll do straight up power chords. I think what's really beautiful is when you play something simply and confidently and smooth and consistently with the rhythm, it sounds like a song immediately. So the reason I put something like that in there was because I'm going out on the road to play a country rock gig uh, tomorrow, and a lot of country rock is blues progressions with either, either power chords or even major chords. So the one, four, five progression that you find and you hear of so often um, really translates to all types of music. And playing the blues progression so often, 
over and over again in courses and in your practice and along with songs and things like that, it trains your ear to hear that one to four to five change, particularly the one to four. You know, if you hear old Motown or R&B songs, like they do that all the time. It could be something like, um, let's see. Uh, let's go a different pickup setting. So like on an A, key of A, maybe we'll go to D. So you can hear that's like a one, four, five in A. It didn't follow necessarily a 12 bar blues, but it was reminiscent of the chord progression. And you may hear that in, um, uh, you know, maybe like, uh, yeah, classic Motown. That's kind of what I'm thinking of when I hear that kind of, Steve Cropper, those kinds of things for sure. Um, so. As you, like I said, as you progress through that course, you're going to get all of, it's going to be a layering process of open chords, power chords, bar chords, um, some, some different movable shapes, some of the shapes that you might have played like a C7. You might move that up to an E7. Uh, so C7, D7, E7, F7, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's what the course is going to teach. And then at the end, You'll have a nice sort of, uh, I believe that course has two songs in it that you can play. Um, there's so many courses, I, I didn't, I'm getting them all confused now. Um, but yeah, so you'll have a couple tunes to put together, uh, some stuff that you've learned in the course, and of course, of course, of course, <laughs> the tabs and PDFs and all that stuff are available too. But I want to say hello to everyone. We've got plenty of people in the chat, and as you can see, Eric and the team has put up the um, the courses and the links, and those are sale price links for sure. So um, let's let's just have a look here. We got our beginner course is coming in this week at ten ninety nine. What a deal! And then our intermediate course, just slightly more at eleven forty three at eighty one percent off. And uh, whoops, phone call. Look at that. <laughs> should have silenced the phone. So I want to take some questions, and I see that some people are expressing their love for the course. Uh, David Elam, I think that's how you say your last name, um, and you purchased the beginner course and you're enjoying it. Awesome. Thanks so much for the support, David. I'm glad you're digging it. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Jason Carter uh, already bought both of them. Well, of course you did, because <laughs> you're the man. Um, I should keep tabs on what I buy. <laughs> you can have as many as you like. Gift them to friends, maybe. I don't know. Um, and Fox Hog T Foxy Hog Terry is looking at the two blues courses, excited to see the teaching style. Um, I think um, that's one of the things I get complimented on the most. So I'm really, I'm really uh, excited for you to check it out too. And Ted C, I know E and Sad E. Let me guess. That's probably. E, sad E, but you get yourself one of these bars, and then it sounds even sadder. <laughs> uh, Mark Nicholson says, love your courses. This old intermediate player is really enjoying your teaching methods. Thank you for all you do, and thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, it's folks like you that kind of keep me doing this for sure, um, so I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Jim Moran says he has finished the Beginner's Blues course and, and is revisiting parts of it. He's very happy with the results so far. Good, I'm glad. Because hopefully those of you that have already purchased the beginner's course, you're seeing um, the benefits of revisiting it. Uh, and hopefully, like I practice every day as well. And some days it's a lot and some days it's just a couple things. Um, it's whatever I have time for. And I'm always constantly seeing the roadmap, if you will, of the guitar neck open up. And the only way to really do that, in my opinion, is to keep revisiting it. You know, I think that's, um, I think that's really, really important. And guitar courses, I say this a lot, are like textbooks in school. You know, rarely, when you had a textbook in school, did you start at page one and go to the end? The teacher usually said, go to page chapter seven, we're going to talk about, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, let's see, the, uh, the Mayans or something, right? You know, and then you go and you learn this, this portion of it. Um, the same thing can happen with guitar courses. Jump around, you know. I like to teach systematically, 
But that doesn't mean if you know something already, you can't jump ahead. And it also doesn't mean you've failed if you didn't complete the thing. I still buy guitar courses. I do them to support my fellow instructors. Um, I like people's different perspectives on the same topics. Um, I think it's, uh, somebody told me once a long time ago, if you were an attorney, you'd probably have a library full of law books. And I think that's uh, valid because you have to kind of um, always be aware of, of how people are saying things and, and new, new content out there and all that stuff. Anyway, I could ramble on with that. Um, let's see here. Adam, hi from London. Uh, so this is great because Adam says that he's taking part in the intermediate course and he's loving it. Uh, any more planned? Yes. So that's another part of what this live stream is about is a lot of folks have been saying, well, you did a beginner blues rhythm course. Is there a beginner blues soloing course? That's what I'm working on. We hope to shoot that uh, even next week. We're going to get started on it. Um, that's going to be really fun. Now, recently, um, I did a YouTube video on my channel called uh let's see if we can find it um because i think i can even share my screen right mike yeah i see that let's see view on youtube what brand of course there's a there's an ad um but what we're going to do in that in that video is we're actually going to do something called targeting the roots so a lot of you probably know, um, you probably know your pentatonic scales, like an A minor pentatonic, right? But what I did was I created a solo in that lesson that really just kind of targets the root notes of the chords and kind of pulls you along through the progression. exact thing right so that seems like oh okay that's kind of a, seems like a basic idea or a way to go around the um, you know the, the scales and kind of lead you through the 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 12 bar and that's what this course is going to do it's gonna it's going to make it very simple in every pentatonic pattern in a few different keys. So I'll be creating very sort of easy, digestible solos. Because, you know, look, I get it. You buy a guitar course from somebody you really admire they're playing and they're going, you know, and they're playing, you know, any kind of licks. And you're like, oh, I can't do that. But you might be able to go, simple 12 bar solo it's training wheels okay you can still play that at the blues jam and you'll be respected and you'll think somebody will think it's cool because it's nice and simple right as opposed to right and go whoa what was that give me something to kind of chew on so that it's going to be a course that sort of says okay let's get our feet wet let's start trying to play some solos in some different patterns in some different keys different rhythmic feels all that kinds of stuff okay so we're i'm really excited about that because i've never done anything like that before i've done some beginner lick stuff but never any conceptual like how to get started playing solos right and we did that with the blues rhythm courses it was super simple all right so um Texas fan forever says that uh, they started learning with Anthony from Texas Blues Allen. Love Anthony. He's been very supportive. Great friend. Uh, and, and directed him, uh, you to me. Thank you. Um, and bought a few courses. Uh, and I really pre appreciate your dedication. The rhythmic rhythm courses are great. Wow, that is huge. I appreciate that so much. Um, and we'll try to help you put all those pieces together, Texas fan, for sure. Thank you so much for that. 
Uh, and we got a um, Kishen from Bangla Bang Bangalore, India, recently finished the beginner course and started the intermediate course. Loving them. That's awesome. We're really excited to be reaching folks uh, in other countries on the regular. Really, really excited about that. So RH says, my name is Rodney, and shamefully I had to go look up Rodney Jean. Uh, Rodney Jean's a cool musician, and he's a good friend, so uh, I decided to wear his shirt today. Um, all right, so Jason, uh, we'll get back to this guitar, Jason. Um, so Texas Fan Forever does ask a great question. What makes a rhythm player good or great? Um, so, excuse me, a rhythm player and what makes them good or great? Think about this. First of all, I had somebody email me this this morning, actually. You, you're going to be playing rhythm guitar like 90% of the song. So it's... Um, so it's imperative that we uh, that we learn how to have a solid rhythmic feel and a handful of options when it comes to playing rhythm guitar. So that's why these courses sort of take you uh, through a journey of not only just how to play an E7, and I did this earlier, but an E7, and an E7, and an E7, and maybe even an E7. And those are just the basic ones that are in the first intermediate course or the beginner course. And then the intermediate course will have a lot more stuff like that, different ways to play it. So what can be tricky when you start throwing in new, new chord shapes like that is somebody will say, well, I know. That's not how you want to play rhythm guitar. <laughs> That's just showing off a bunch of chords that you know. So a way to play rhythm guitar is maybe take an E7 like that. And you have a nice, see how that's That's my pulse. And I can kind of accent that wherever I want. Now I need to go to an A7. Where do I go? I don't go here. I don't go here. I don't go here. I'm going to keep it close. So I'm going to go here. I could play an A7 bar chord. I could play this A7, which is one of my favorites. Same, nice and close to that E7. Now for the B7, I could change it up here. I could go to bar chord. Or I could go take that A shape, move it up a whole step. So you want to keep your 12 bar progressions and your chord voicings close to each other. You know, you don't necessarily, like if you're just playing something simple, maybe C, and you need to go to an F. Well, I go here. When you're playing in an ensemble, you want to kind of pick your spots and try to find a spot where you kind of stay in um, and are complementary. Because once you are there, the other instruments can kind of build around you. So that's those are a few things that make a great rhythm guitar player. And also... Um, you know, what's the what's word I'm looking for? Um, try not to play too much. You know, if you're playing something that's like maybe a Bo Diddley beat, right, in the key of A. That's kind of cool if you're, if you're uh, just the only guitar player. But maybe you have a keyboard player going maybe you Smaller chord. There it is. Keyboard player goes away. So you kind of, you're on and off the gas with how much you're physically playing. That's another thing too. Yeah. All right. All right. Michael Fox is in the in the house. Um. And 
Dwight Park says, I bought Corey's Beginner Rhythm Close, and if so far I've found it very easy to follow. Lots of good information, well worth having this in your bag of tricks. Thank you, Dwight. Appreciate that. Um, Tim C. Uh, oh, Michael Caswell, good to have you here. The Intermediate course was great. Thank you. Uh, Tim C., loving the course so far. Which course on your website would be a good follow-up? Um, I, I like kind of going on to the Complete Blues series that I've done. Those are great because they're both rhythm and lead based, and a lot of the same stuff will transfer, but in more challenging ways, in more complete performance ways. Uh, <laughs> Jason Carter says, it's good to see all the guitars back on the on the rack. You know, so here's the thing is I sold guitar, a few guitars. Then this one came in, which we'll get into, uh, came in last week, which I ordered a year ago. Excuse me. Um, and then... Um, just because I want to give it a shout out because I love my friend. Um, I was, I was gifted this really cool telly by my good friend, Scott Lombardo, who has been, uh, just, uh, without him, I wouldn't have gotten my start in a lot, a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, Scott, um, has been diagnosed with ALS and is getting into the place, place where he can't play like he used to. And he used to really be able to shred. So this is something I will honor and cherish and keep for all of my days. So so I sold two guitars, and I came came back with two more. <laughs> uh, I was trying to thin the herd a little bit. I was trying to not be so gluttonous, you know. Um, all right. Yeah, great, Carol. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, uh, appreciate all that about the courses thank you so much jersey soundtrack says uh, it's tom his name's tom uh purchased both rhythm courses can you give me some tips or examples on playing blues rhythms when i'm using my thumb to maintain uh the bass around no flat picking strumming um well you know i know that joe robinson has put out um, some course, I think a course or two with, uh, with Eric and the, in the family. Um, and he'd be a great one. You know, one time I sat down with Joe and I started doing some finger style stuff cause I'm not great at it. And I was like, how do I get better? And he was like, the thumb is the most important thing. It's the timekeeper, you know? So, you know, if you're playing a C7, I would start off with the simplest of rhythms, um, and what I would also do um, is just work on that boom chick, boom chick, and then also the boom chick with the sort of alternating bass. But he thinks the thumb is the most important thing because he's right. <laughs> Yes, Adam, this Novo is insane. We'll get to this in a second here. Got any tips for intermediate advance? Please tell. Okay, so the anonymous, that is something I'm going to get into as well. Um, I'm going to going to put out more of what's called a beyond intermediate course. And beyond intermediate isn't necessarily advanced. I thought what would be really cool would be to start up a course that was uh, riff-based, something fun. Like maybe you're playing... Um, G7, and you can play some cool chord substitutions against that, like, like um, a D minor 7 and an E minor 7. So maybe you play something like... You know, so you can start to put some substitutions and kind of maybe create some little riffs. Like uh, maybe three, four.
you know, create more riff-based stuff as opposed to saying, here's a chord, here's a, you know, stuff like that. So I want to do something like that, but also put some fun tricks in, some diminished chords, some like jazzy blues turnarounds, stuff like that as well. So I think that'll be, that'll be something really fun. All right, who else we got? Uh, Climber, 7565. Um, thank you for all the kind words. Appreciate that. Jim Moran, once again, um, also have gone through your Targeting the Root Notes course. Um, combine the solo with the information from Beginner's Blues course. There you go. Putting it all together. That's the idea. Thanks, Jim. Um, uh, you got to keep the metronome or simple drum beat going to keep your rhythm chops up. I agree with you, sir. Um, and I'm that is a big part of um, of my courses as I put that stuff in. I always put in tracks, and I want you to lean on the tracks for sure. USS Defiant uh, is the beginner course for the absolute beginner. Um, the beginner course would be for someone that can play, start with playing open chords like E7, A7, and B7. So if you've played first position open chords, I think that would be good. Uh, let's see here. All right, thanks, Michael. Appreciate you jumping into those. Um, a course based on play along trading solos in the jams like where you can practice whole songs through kind of like how you ended the intermediate. Um, that's something I'm going to pursue Galaxy Gooner in the future as well. Um, I definitely think that uh, is something that's missing. Um, and a reason why I'm like, you know, at this particular beautiful crossroads of my career where I'm like, I'm actually enjoying doing this more than getting on a plane these days. <laughs> um, and you can... You can read into that however you want. I don't have a problem with the process of getting on a plane, so don't go crazy on me. But my point is, it's just like, you know, being home, not being home and not being able to interface with everybody I've met over the past few years, it, it's, a, it's a drag. And doing it from your phone just isn't the same to me. Like, I like it, and it's fine, but, um, but I love being in this room right here, and I love being able to turn on this beautiful equipment and getting a great sound and uh, and uh, just like creating something new, you know? So even the YouTube videos that I create, nine out of 10 times, I'll create this, the track from scratch and it'll inspire me. So um, I'm really enjoying hopefully pursuing that on, on an infinite basis. All right, so let's talk a little bit quickly about this guitar. I'm surprised more of you haven't asked. Um, I am, look, when you order a custom made guitar, I've, I've, been, I've gotten bit a few times with the neck not being what I want or the color, the frets sometimes maybe was the wrong choice. Sometimes it's been my fault, sometimes it hasn't been my fault. So I was really skeptical, I was like, man, but Novo, just doesn't have a lot of instruments that you can buy off the rack because a lot of custom companies can't. They, they cannot keep up with the demand and the price of wood and materials and all that's just in, insanely crazy right now. So like my Mario guitars, I wanted to support a local Nashville-based company. Um, Dennis Fano created Novo Guitars some years ago. Um, you see some people like uh, Rhett Schull and... Um, and uh, uh, RJ play these guitars and I was like you know I really want to check this out so this is called the Miris this is a semi hollow with a jazz master style trim and I saw this black color on their Instagram and it had a black over gold so this is actually black over copper um, and then I saw this pick guard and I was like wow I have to have that and then they did the binding the same way and then the neck the back is natural the neck is a uh, flamed uh, tempered maple, the uh, the body is tempered pine, super light, and then these gold foil pickups have become kind of uh, nouveau again. I'm 
just really digging them. And somebody was talking about some kind of nasty sound they wanted to hear. But you know, these pickups are very low output and they sound great with overdrive. that like kind of that's just a light overdrive that's the gladio pedal so if we take a fuzz Tram, this is a mastery bridge and tram, it feels amazing. So we'll do fuzz and some good game. getting fuzzy but then right back to that so the gold foils pickups these are Lawler gold foils and they're really low output and they have this sort of fun vintage sort of jangle honk <laughs> This is it. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I did fly, I did travel and do a gig on it uh, last week. I played a few songs on it. It wasn't the right guitar for all the songs. That's kind of, you gotta choose your toolbox, you know, the tools in your toolbox. Um, but I hope to incorporate it more into, into what I do. Um, so yeah, so there are links for both of those courses. We'll talk about the inter intermediate course here um, shortly. Um, but I wanna answer some questions. Actually, before we get into the questions, so the intermediate course that's on sale, which I believe now is on sale for $11.43. You can't buy a backing track for $11.43, folks. And you got three hours of material on this baby. Um, four days left, 81% off. What more do you need to know other than what's in it? So let's talk a little bit more about what's in it. Um, Basically, if we go from the beginner course with your open chords, bar chords, power chords, some movable shapes, um, it takes that to another level and starts to do more of that stuff like I was talking about where we, we put the chords together to make these smaller groupings. You know, things like that. Um, and to really sort of, somebody asked earlier, what makes a good rhythm guitar player? Well, that's part of it, having a really sort of, uh, you know, thoughtful approach to what chords we're going to choose. Not playing a G7 here, and then a C7 here, and then a D7 here. You know, maybe playing something more like that. And that's what the intermediate course will teach you. And there's more songs in that one, and I even show you how to do more of a, uh, uh, a song on your own as opposed to with the tracks so um, so that's more about what's based uh, what the intermediate course is based on um, all right so the anonymous wants to know what's a useful scale or something other than pentatonic for soloing <laughs> great question I'm going to give you the answer nobody was expecting uh, a C major a major scale <laughs> to, uh, because all of the answers of Every scale known to man can be traced back to the major scale. Just dropped a video a couple weeks ago uh, on major scale soloing. Um, but 
if you're talking about the blues over uh, or the pentatonic scale in blues music uh, or blues solo when you're improvising, um, of course there are elements of the major scale, but more so than scales is to me um, major minor pentatonic cornerstone, but dominant seven arpeggios should be something you should really look into. Um, more so than Mixolydian, any mode, um, the arpeggios give you all the answers to the chords immediately. And I have videos on my channel about that, which I would love for you to jump over to and check out and subscribe if you are so moved to do so. Um, good to have Tennessee Valley Yoga. I love your courses and will definitely purchase upcoming and happy to see that musicians are now able to make a living sharing what they do best. That might be the best comment of the day. Thank you so much. Start learning guitar headless or with out headstock or doesn't matter doesn't matter if your guitar has a headstock or not as long as it's got six strings um jason carter says any plans to start live streaming again obviously not as regularly but now again now and again if i can do it um again jason like what i was talking about i gotta leave tomorrow and i'm not gonna be back till friday afternoon so i'm really like kind of like revamping my schedule i love playing live and i want to keep doing it but i think i like doing this more so, um, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> What's the most important music theory to learn? Castle Bowser says. Does that have any? Is that any reference to Mario Kart? And if it is, that's awesome. Um, What's the most important music theory to learn? I think if I, you know, was being sort of held to that as like a statement I had to make, learning what I would call the harmonized chord scale which means if you have a C major scale, each one of those chords can have, or notes can have chords built from it. You know, that kind of thing. So basically each one is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so if somebody says the song is one six two five, that way I know those chords. Now, if I know what that order is in another key, I can play one six two five and G. And that's kind of more commonly known as the Nashville number system, and I use it on a daily basis. Absolutely. So that's just a quick answer to that. That could be a five-hour discussion. Um, Barry Kane, thanks so much for jumping in and grabbing both. Um, that is awesome. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, uh, let's see here. Hey, thanks for jumping, dropping my channel in there. Um, let's see here. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Of course, jump over. Oh, there's my Instagram. Look at that. You guys are, they're treating me so good here uh, at Your Guitar Sage. Any uh, any other random questions I'm happy to uh, to answer. So so I'll take a stab at this and, and see if I can answer Duo Q Life's. Play a G major chord, move it up two frets, take your index finger off to get that open A. What is that called? <laughs> it could be a number of things. From the top of my head, let's see here. So what's, what, you gotta establish your root note. So if you wanna make that A, great. So do you wanna have that open A? So now you got a double A, okay. So now you got a D, that's a fourth or an 11th. Now you have a G, that could be a flat seven. Now you have a, a an E, that's the fifth, and then an A. So that could be like a A7 sus4. Like um. But really, not a lot of definition with those open strings. If you got a song for it, go for it. But I wanted to take a crack at it. <laughs> but here, this is a cool thing. You know, if you have an app like this, is the Guitar Pro app or Guitar... I don't remember what it's called. Guitar Toolkit. You can build a chord. 
Let's see if I was even close. Look at that. A7 sus4. You put the notes in and it tells you what it was and I nailed it. Haha. <laughs> but it doesn't have much of that sus sound because that that sus is like kind of low in the chord. So, yeah, there you go. Um Castle Bowser. Um Question is, did you answer my Mario Kart question? Is your name after have anything to do with Mario Kart? Um, what's the best scale to have the classic rock sound? Absolutely minor pentatonic all day long. Got it. Got to go there. Uh, I just picked up the intermediate. Dwight Parks says, just picked up the intermediate course. Looking forward to continuing the journey after I finished the beginner's course. I have said it before. I'll say it again. Those courses I did uh, back to back. One week I shot the beginner's course at Eric's studio. The next week I shot the other one, and they go perfectly together. I did them as a perfect piggyback. Absolutely. Um, and Carol Kays says uh, that Carol has each lesson has been helpful. It is free, and and the pace can be slowed and adjusted as you get faster. That's the whole idea for sure. Um, need you to cover those hammer. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Rich. Okay, good. I, I got you. Rich is talking about another course that I did with uh, sort of that kind of stuff. So important. So important for your, your rock and acoustic rhythm playing, for sure. All right, I got confirmation. Um, I love Mario. It's his childhood. And I'm playing, I play Mario Kart on my phone all the time. <laughs> it's, it's one of my pastimes. Um, Ted C asks, fastest way to convert to Nashville number system thinking? numbering knowing songs that's a great way to do it take any sort of classic rock song um and uh country songs work great uh and try to put the number like once you know the key um like let's say one i always go to So love the one you're with, right? So that's in C. One, four, four, one. One, four, four, one. One, four, four, one. One, four, four, one. Bridge. Six, five, four. Six, five, four. Six, five, four. One, four, four, one. That kind of stuff, okay? So that's those sorts of songs. Like, you, you know, you really want to... Use easy ones, basically, to try to apply the number system to. It makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see. Oh, awesome, thanks. Nice one. Had a song with that chord in it. Yeah, it's a weird chord, Duo Q Life. Yeah, I mean, I guess sometimes if you want to, if you're getting sort of art rocky, maybe you want to put some effects on. Let's see if I can get some. So now he's using that kind of weird chord. A little delay, a little reverb. Boy, doesn't the guitar sound good for that? Yeah, so if it's an A7 sus4, now you're going, you could say it's four, five, one. Maybe. I don't know. That's how you use the number system. You kind of sort of navigate your way through tunes like that with, with keys. Um, let's see here. You guys are starting to crush it now. Um, how to create the your own scales, because there are so many chords, modes, arpeggios. I mean, how were all these things derived? That's a good question, the anonymous. Um, again, they're all derived from the major scale, um, and they were derived from a series of whole steps and half steps and somebody decided that that was <laughs> going to be the basis um, for that that eight note scale and then 12 with each half step in between them um, so that's a history lesson in and of itself um, everything comes from that though every everything comes from it for sure um, 
Hey, thanks, uh, Stivosaurus. I appreciate you jumping in that. Um, and yeah, you can get into these courses risk-free, for sure. Um, yeah, Jason Carter, congrats on that guitar. They're a cool brand, for sure. Those got Trev Wilkinson's a wonderful dude. Um, thanks, Rich Johnson. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a blast working with Eric. The, Eric and his team are so incredibly organized and really have the students' uh, best interests uh, at heart. We want to make a quality product. We want people to be um, uh, feel like they're fulfilled for sure when they purchase this stuff. Um, so Christopher Saltmarch says that he just purchased my courses. What's the best way to get the most out of them? You know, so with any guitar courses, what I would do is watch them for fun first. You know, see what's um, appealing about them and jump in sort of wherever you want. Now, my courses do systematically work from lesson to lesson on each other, but there's nothing saying you can't jump in at any particular point. Um, guitar courses are like textbooks, are like, um, you know, method books, like magazine articles, anything, anything that you can get a, a minute piece from because you're, you're, own individual guitar journey is going to be the fabric of just so many different things. It's not going to be, you're not going to go through one of my courses and play like me. You're going to play like you with the information I gave you, okay? Because I don't know what music you're listening to. We're all, you know, it's like the food we eat, you know, is all going to, to shape us, our flavors, our tastes, all that stuff. So it's, it's uniquely individual, which I really love. I mean, like I said, I buy guitar courses still, and I'll watch them for fun. And I'll put them on in the background while I'm cooking or I know people that like have long drives and they buy guitar courses and listen to them on their phone. And it's, you can say, okay, I, I like what I heard there. I'm going to go back and I'm going to check that out. Um, so if you're, if you're a really early player, watch some of the stuff where I'm not actually playing. Cause I feel that my conceptual ideas are really important too. Okay. And that's the stuff you can get on a run or a walk with your dog or, you know, just chilling out, making dinner, whatever. Um, listen to some of the things that are conceptual because I think that's important too. So hopefully that helps, Christopher. And of course, you can always email me through my website if you have a question. Um, Castle Bowser asks a great question. Do you think modern music became lazy, especially the top songs currently compared to the past, like the music made by the Beatles, Ramones, and the Beach Boys? Okay, so this is interesting because I think every generation looks at the current one and thinks something like that, right? But I will say that I think older generations that we've kind of know, come to know and admire, whether it be 50s, let's just go from the 50s up to like the 80s, um, there was a lot of experimentation because the instruments weren't developed, you know? Um, the reason you have so much synth pop in the 80s because the synth was a new instrument and a synthesizer is virtually infinite with regards to how many uh, sounds it can create, you know? Um, in the 50s, getting distortion was an entirely new concept. Imagine that, you know? So that launches an entirely new wave of things. You know, late 70s with the dawn of like Eddie Van Halen and people doing that and, and really, really having this like crazy amount of ability on the guitar. And I've skipped over Hendrix and all that. I didn't even get to that yet. But like, so you see each generation has something to offer. Unfortunately, I think for a lot of us, we find comfort into the generation that we thrived in, right? Um, my generation, like I love a lot of the blues and fusion and jazz and rock that was, nine, the 90s were a beautiful place of like, excuse me, all that stuff kind of coming together, late 80s too. And then in the 2000s, I really got into country music because there was a lot of still virtuosic playing in there. And I really loved the idea of being a country guitar player. Uh, and now I'm realizing I'm back to my roots with blues and R&B and jazz is where I want to be. Um, so that's kind of what you'll see more from me for sure. But w with regard to being lazy, I don't know, because if you've tried to learn a computer program to help you record, you can't really be lazy doing that. You got to research how to do it. You got to watch YouTube videos. So 
So the folks that are making music on their computer had to learn, and that wasn't lazy. They had to use a new instrument somehow. So we're going to look back at all these generations and see that each one had something to offer, whether we like it or not. It's a whole different story. Um, like guitar players, for me, that I see a lot of this in Nashville, where there's a lot of this happening. Let's make it even worse. Like so, you hear this atmosp atmospheric guitar. You know, and you, I'll have young guitar players say that I, I play that kind of sound in church, right? And to me, I'm a purist guitar player more so, and I'm like, ah, but I love atmospheric things and sounds. But I'm like, ah, oh, man, you got to branch out a little bit more. But I'm realizing that that he, that player is a product of the experience they had, the gig that they had, and there's something to be learned from it. So, do I think putting on a big reverb pedal and hitting two notes is lazy? At one point, I might have, but if it's, that's to say, like. Somebody who paints in black and white is lazy. Why don't they use more colors? I don't know. It's still art. So lots of really sort of political ways I can say that. <laughs> but no, I don't think the music is lazy today because I think everything is challenging and hard to learn. With regard to virtuosic guitar playing, I don't know. There's a lot of young, great players out there. So it's hard to say. Okay. I want to answer a few more things and jump off. Um... This is a good one, though. We'll end here. Um, you seem to have a ton of courses, including other beginner courses. Hard to decide where to begin. Um, so I really don't have a lot of beginner courses. Um, the beginner blues rhythm course I did because it was a, it's a Stone Cold beginner um, course for sure. Um, there's a course I have called 30 Beginner Blues Licks, um, 30 Beginner Acoustic Rhythms is, is a good one, too. Uh, I think those are like two, three of my more beginner-based courses. Um, and each one is sort of set in a path. If you can play a little bit of pentatonic blues soloing, that beginner blues licks is just going to be phrases. You know, whoop, let's turn that reverb off. Whoops. How about like um, if it's something like or a vibra simple vibrato lick. Like if you already know how to use a um, a scale, having licks are like nice sentences, and that's a course that's full of little mini sentences with some techniques. Um, you know, if you're the acoustic course, I have I've had plenty of students take that, and it works in their rock playing, it works in their blues playing because it's all about um, your right arm, your right hand, or your strumming hand for sure. That being said. Um, USS Defiant, you can email me at any point and I can give you some more detail uh, into uh, into what course might be right for you. And of course, most of them have sort of a trial basis so you can see which one's right for you. Um, the 60s were intense for sure because there was a lot of guitar uh, uh, innovation then for sure and it really sparked for sure, definitely. Um, all right, I think that's it, y'all. That hour went fast. That wasn't so bad. Maybe I'll have to do these more often again. But uh, folks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the support for helping me get over to the 30K mark this week on YouTube. That was huge. Um, if I had my sound effect, I would have some kind of applause going on. <laughs> and thanks so much for hanging with me here and asking questions about the courses. Um, both courses with, uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> um, the uh, Beginner Blues Rhythm Course on sale. Uh, that one is 78% off, coming in at a whopping $10.99. And the Intermediate Blues Course, 81% off at $11.43 for all of that knowledge, for sure. On sale until uh, through Friday. And uh, I think you guys are going to dig them. It's, it's a lot, a lot of value for, for I think, uh, a pretty fair price. And we're happy to do this to not only... Um, promote the course, but celebrate uh, me hitting the 30,000. Um, got a long way to go, and I, but I appreciate everybody being along for the ride. If, um, if Eric and Mike are okay, I'm going to jump off, and uh, 
I'll see you guys out there. Thanks so much. And don't forget to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to Eric's, which I'm sure you already are. Feel free to contact me via my website. Uh, lots of lots of great stuff happening uh, in the future on my website and, of course, in conjunction with your Guitar Sage and the fine folks there. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here.